Hi, welcome back to Chemistry with Mrs. Mays. Today we're going to take a look at atomic emission spectra so that we can tell what is unique about the atoms and why the spectrums um, are all different. See, when energy is added to atoms, they must release the energy and they do so in the form of light. When energy is added to atoms, we call it an absorption, and the electrons absorb energy and become what we call excited. Just like when you have too much energy and your parents are like, why are you so excited? The excited electrons move from their initial state or their ground state to a shell that is farther from the nucleus because now they have more energy and that makes them move elsewhere. So an absorption is where your electron in its normal energy level um, gets bombarded by a photon of light and it transfers the energy to the electron so the electron moves to an energy level that is farther away from the nucleus. In an emission, that's when the electrons emit the energy or they release that extra energy in the form of light as they return to the ground state. So the electron can't go back to where it was until it releases that extra energy. When it releases the energy, we are able to perceive it as a photon of light. So energized atoms emit energy but they don't produce a continuous spectrum like the rainbow where it's all of the colors. Instead of um, having a rainbow effect, we see only specific wavelengths and frequencies. So the energy gets added, it makes the electron move to a higher energy level, then when it goes back down, the energy is released, and we see only certain bands of color because the electron only exists in certain energy levels. And each color we see corresponds to a certain energy level that is a certain distance from the nucleus. So this depends on the distance we are from the nucleus and the charge that's found in the nucleus, how many protons there are. The lowest energy level is simply called the ground state because if something is on the ground it can't fall any farther down. That's the lowest level it can be at. So the ground state is the lowest level. All of the other levels, those are all called excited states. Atoms would not normally be emitting this radiation. They only emit radiation uh, when they've absorbed extra energy. Bohr did the experiment where he discovered the photoelectric effect. And Niels Bohr believed that the electrons existed only in certain discrete stable orbits around the nucleus. That means they didn't blend into one another. It was either level 1 or level 2. There's no level 1.5. And the energy varied relative to the distance the electrons were from the nucleus. So in energy level 1, an electron would have this amount of energy. But at energy level 2, as we get farther away, its energy went up higher. And so on. If we're specifically looking at the emission spectrum for the atom hydrogen, then we see that energy differences between the orbits correspond exactly with the energy of the spectral lines in the emission spectrum of hydrogen. So if we were looking back at the difference between energy level 1 and energy level 2, then the difference in these energies, when we subtract them, we would see that that amount of energy corresponds to a certain color or wavelength in the hydrogen emission spectrum. So if we look at the red line wavelength, the red line has a wavelength of uh, 656.3 nanometers. We can use 
E equals H times frequency and then convert the frequency to the wavelength using C equals lambda times the frequency then we can calculate the energy associated with red. When we do that it's going to be equal to the energy of an electron at energy level 3 minus the electron at energy level 2. When we take the difference of those two we get the same as a red line. What Bohr deduced from this information is that the red line is caused by the transition of the electron from energy level 3 to energy level 2. When it goes from a higher energy to a lower energy, it's releasing that photon of light and that particular photon has the wavelength that we associate with a color red. Well hydrogen atoms are pretty simple. They have only one proton and they have one electron. The hydrogen spectrum shows all of the different possible wavelengths of visible light that are emitted when an excited electron returns to any of the lower energy states. Not just the ground state, but anything lower, going from higher to lower. So we see from a 6 to a 2, we get a purple wavelength. From a 4 to a 2, we get the blue. And from a 3 to a 2, we get the red. It should make sense that more energy is associated with a bigger move. So the bigger the move, the higher the energy. And this doesn't happen only for hydrogen. Each atom produces a unique emission spectrum after being energized due to the differing numbers of protons in the nucleus and the numbers of electrons around them. The emission spectrum of each element is unique and because it is, we can use the spectrum to identify which elements are present. So we can use the emission spectrum as a test to decide what particular elements are there and which ones are not. A flame test is used particularly to identify metals. When an excited atom emits light, we see all of the spectral lines all put together. They're all combined and only one color is visible to us. So in my class we'll use a prism or a diffraction grating so that we can separate out all of the colors that are sort of blending together and see bands of specific colors. If we want to see the emission spectrum, that's what we have to do. We have to break apart all of the blended together colors, the colors that have combined, we have to break them apart. And a prism or the diffraction grating is used to do that. Because the light enters the prism and the prism breaks it apart into the different wavelengths. For many elements, one can identify them simply by seeing the color that's produced by all of the spectral lines together. Certain metals are well known for the colors that they produced. Then a flame test is used to detect the presence of certain metal ions based on that element's characteristic emission spectrum. Here's an example of what colors we might see during the flame test. Now fireworks utilize the fact that atoms emit visible light in specific colors when they're excited with energy. So if we can provide a little bit extra energy, we can get the colors we want if we use the right kind of atom. Furthermore, they use the unique spectra to produce all the different colors that we would see in a fireworks show. So when you're learning about pyrotechnics, which is the science of fireworks, you have to also know about chemistry. How about that? Practice in class. We'll do a lab, and we'll um, work this out together in class. I'll see you soon.